Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Introduction to Network Devices, Part 3. Today I'm going to be talking about spam filters, and then we're going to conclude with a brief discussion on some network devices. And with that, let's go ahead and begin this session. Of course, I'm going to begin by talking about the spam filter. So what is spam? In most cases, spam is defined as unsolicited bulk email, or UBE, or sometimes it's called junk mail. The spammer, that's the person who is sending the spam, is hoping that the recipient will buy a product or service. While in most cases, the receiving of spam isn't a security threat in itself, it is considered a waste of resources, which in a way is a security threat. There are various filters that are available for spam. These can be put in place, usually on an SMTP server, to reduce the amount of spam that is received by the end users. These filters include the Real-Time Blacklist, or RBL. This is a subscription service that provides a list of known IP addresses of spam hosts, which then allows them to be blocked from reaching the SMTP server. Then there is the connection filter, which is prohibiting a list of specific IP addresses from connecting to an SMTP server. There are also recipient filters. This is blocking messages sent to a particular recipient or end user. There are also sender filters. This is blocking messages sent from a particular entity. And finally, there is the sender ID filter. This allows an SMTP server to review the sender policy framework or SPF record of the sender in DNS. If the sending SMTP server is listed, the message is accepted. It's not counted as spam. The first known instance of spam occurred in 1978 and involved an advertisement for Digital Equipment Corporation, that's DEC, computers. While the reaction from the spam was largely negative, it did result in some sales and guess what? The spam industry was born. When the term spam became associated with unsolicited bulk email is unknown. But we can blame Monty Python's Flying Circus for the term spam. In 1970, they aired a skit in which the word spam keeps getting used. As a matter of fact, it's used in a song, and it effectively blocked useful communication. That's how a lot of people feel about spam. Not that it's necessarily harmful, but that it can hinder useful communication. Now let's move on to a brief discussion of some network devices. First up is the Web Security Gateway. It's a system designed to protect networks from malicious content that is on the internet. It can be used to filter out prohibited content. It can also be used to scan for malicious code. In some cases, these systems can also be used as a data loss prevention measure. In these cases, all outgoing content is scanned. If sensitive content is discovered in the scan, it's not allowed to leave the network. This helps entities to keep their secrets within their own networks. Not really a device on its own, but we need to discuss it anyways, is the protocol analyzer. It's often called a packet sniffer. It examines the network behavior at a very basic level. They allow the examination of the individual packets of data that are flowing on the network. They can be used to see what is consuming network resources, as in is a broadcast storm occurring or is an interface going bad. Protocol analyzers can help to identify that. They can also be used to identify a network breach or attack. Protocol analyzers can also be used to study the methods that were used to create a network breach. Wireshark is a common protocol analyzer that is often used, and better yet, it's free. The Web Application Firewall is an application layer, or Layer 7, firewall that is used to control HTTP traffic that is allowed to reach the web server. 
This allows for greater inspection and control of messages and traffic that is destined to a network's web servers. They are configured to protect the servers from common attacks. They differ from normal network firewalls in that they are only concerned about what is attempting to reach the web server. Network firewalls, on the other hand, attempt to protect the network as a whole, which means that the web application firewall is much more specialized and allows for more granular control. Now that concludes this session on the Introduction to Network Devices Part 3. I began by talking about the spam filter, and I concluded with a brief discussion on some network devices. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope to do another one soon.